Okay. No money. It's Hi. a pleasure a pleasure to have you here with the Co-Creation Foundation at our colloquium. Um, it's uh, really, I, I'm very excited because um, we met each other in December, I think it was, was it December in Tunis on a conference? It was the um, forum of the Friedrich Naumann Foundation on innovation and politics in Tunis. Yep. And you were a participant and panelist and speaker there. And I did a workshop there. And we had the pleasure that in the evening we could dine together. And um, that was for me, I would say, in the last years, one of the most exciting dinners I had. Because I learned almost in a very short package, I learned about the Arab Spring. I learned a lot about uh, Tunisia about its constitution and political system and especially what happened after um, the Arab Spring in Tunisia and the recent political developments and I found this so uh, exciting and interesting this conversation that we had a um, follow-up conversation on Zoom and now we have this interview session here and I'm really happy to have you um, with us. Nomani, um, I know you, you have done many, many, many things. Um, and usually we, we, we don't really go into that that much um, in these sessions here. I hope you don't mind. But I uh, would at least give a, a couple of information on you as well. And everyone else can read about you on your websites and also on LinkedIn and of course uh, on the Co-Creators University where we published this session. But uh, the most important things I would like to mention anyways is, and that's the main function why you're here, not just because you're, you're a great person to speak to, but you have been a member of the Tunisian Constituent Assembly in 2011 and that is your function was to co-write the new constitution for Tunisia after the Arab Spring. And um, you've also been in the subsequent assembly of the people's representatives in 2014, and then later served as a minister for digital economy in Tunis. Yeah, and now you're, uh, since 2017, you've, uh, you're the managing partner of partner of ODF, Our Digital Future. You've been a business angel. You, you've won medals and prizes all over the place. And of course, this is interesting as well. Um, originally, you have a master's degree in geophysics. Is that right? Yes, yeah. correct. And it's quite interesting because a lot of people who, who are in politics and, and, and um, in, in the theory of politics and praxis, I find have some background in geology or geophysics or some kind of earth-based science. That's interesting, interesting uh, observation. <laughs> so, Nomani, thank you very much for being here with us today. Thank you for inviting me. Um, so you, you, you. Uh, I'm, I'm really glad to be here. In a nutshell, I'm a physicist who spent ten years in in oil and gas and ten years in uh, digital economy, and the, uh, and then six years in uh, uh, ingrained by uh, by luck rather than by judgment into uh, politics in Tunisia because I wanted to give back, and then for the, over the last uh, six years. I'm working with startups and new generation, you know, building the new, the new economy, which is part of the new world. Yeah. That's a yeah. Little, who I am. And I'm glad to be here to share with you uh, any thoughts you'd like me to share. Thank you. Yeah. There are basically two things I would like to uh, speak uh, uh, with you today about. And one is, of course, I think especially for those who will uh, watch this video later, this conversation, it would be good to have a very short and, and sort of concise introduction again for, especially for European and North American uh, listeners um, and 
about the Arab Spring and, and how this process of writing a constitution works. And then, of course, our main interest at the Co-Creation Foundation is in what we call this governance design. Like, how can we consciously design for governance? And, of course, writing a constitution is something like, in our understanding, like, like coding a political system uh, for, 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 for a society. Um, so y you have basically done what we are talking about in this respect. Um, we've done that as well, but more in the sort of citizens realm of participation and you've done it in the, in the realm of official politics. And that is very interesting for you. So my first question really, just as, as an introduction for everyone, and, and I know I wouldn't ask this uh, uh, if I didn't know that you're perfect in doing this because we had this dinner conversation. Can you, can you give us a very sort of brief reminder of what happened during the Arab Spring in Tunisia and how especially you became uh, a member of this constituent assembly? Okay. So uh, thank you. I'll, I'll take... Uh two to three minutes to say the, the, the how, what happened and the how. So Tunisia, uh, Tunisia is a small country in North, of, uh, in North of Africa, as you know, but it ha has its independence in 1956. And uh, they had one ruler, which is uh, Bourguiba, who was what we call enlightened ruler, who was pushed one third of the budget of the country was in education. Uh, but he, like many many leaders, he uh, it was difficult for him to to uh, to step down. Uh, therefore, for uh, his uh, uh, his uh, prime minister in 1987 uh, toppled him down, but constitutionally, while respecting the constitution, because Bourguiba became uh, senile, let's say. And then uh, Ben Ali, who is the new, uh, not ruler, but uh, leader, but ruler of the country, ruled the country from 97 until 2011. In 90, uh, sorry, I have a blocked nose. So, so in, uh, uh, in uh, 97, uh, in, in 87, when he became, uh, 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 when he became, a uh, uh, you know, president, he really tried to do a good job for the first few years. And then uh, uh, the election was supposed to be in 1989. So he presented himself for the election. He did the first good term. And then again, he didn't want to let uh, to let go. He stayed in power. So uh, he changed the constitution to have a th three terms uh, instead of two terms. Uh, but while he was doing that, he was less educated person compared to Bourguiba, but he's very, he comes from uh, military background, military police background. And uh, over uh, Tunisia, with its ed very well educated people, emancipated women, etc. So a country which was, you know, uh, had its difficulties, so it under the hand of some uh, kleptocracy. Uh, uh, so what happened is that the uh, uh, in the 14th of Jan and 17th of December 2010, there was a, a, a fruit seller who who had enough from uh, not being. Uh, able to sell his fruit because the police was uh, asking him for uh, for uh, uh, for uh, uh, a paper uh, authorization to sell fruit on the street so he burned himself and uh, when he burned himself he, uh, the uh, the the uh, 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 facebook was allowed in tunisia some people f uh, took uh, uh, took these scenes and then it becomes it propagated like fire. Uh, not he was burning, but the news propagated like like fire, and the youth uh, said enough is enough. It has been twenty three years that we have the same ruler, and his family is becoming uh, more and more uh, taking the become uh, taking the economy 
uh, they are in charge of the economy, and they started. We started to have some demonstration, uh, which unusual in Tunisia. It happened once in 2008, but not at that level. Then slowly, uh, the demonstration were going up until 14th of January, while we were we have been uh, we were in the streets, uh, you know the full. Uh, uh, Habib Bourguiba Street, which is the equivalent of, uh, I don't know, the Champs Elysees in Paris, uh, mm -hmm. was full of people uh, de demanding uh, the departure of the of the ruler. Uh, but the the uh, the uh, popular anger was so high uh, that the president was took was advised to take his family to a safe place. So he went with his family to, he traveled to, with his family. He took a plane to go to Saudi Arabia. Some people said he's flee. Some people said he was going to put his family and come back, whatever. But then at that time, uh, the uh, people, the, uh, uh, the military and the, uh, uh, and the people in power actually, in order to bring down the uh, demonstration, uh, they used one article of the Constitution, which was Article 57, which says in the uh, in the uh, case of uh, in the case of temporary uh, absence of uh, the president, and if he didn't design uh, who uh, if he didn't uh, decide who replaces him, the the member of uh, uh, the head of the uh, uh, the head of the parliament, uh, the speaker of the parliament, become the president until he comes. So, uh, uh, actually, the prime minister, uh, the prime minister became uh, became uh, uh, became the, uh, the 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 temporary president. And in the case which we he did, and later on, two days later, uh, he said, "No, it's not anymore Article 56, which is temporary." It's Article 57 because the president is not coming back. Basically, they told him don't come back, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, he became uh, uh, another article where the head of the uh, of the parliament became uh, became the president. While while that happened, I was uh, I was one of the people who who have been educated, who benefit from the scholarship from the, the previous regime, uh, Bourguiba regime, who said, uh, who, uh, I didn't have money to, uh, to, 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 to study abroad. I got scholarship, but I found myself in a situation on 14th of January there. So I felt from my gut feel that I need to give back. So mm -hmm. I decided to stay and to help the country, to give back what the country gave me. I was living in UK at that time. My family was in UK, but it happened that I was in Tunisia by coincidence. So I decided to stay there to help the country. And from that, uh, helping the country, we started to do, try to look what can we do, etc. We ended up deciding that the best way to do is to create a pol new political party to enter the elections and to uh, to take the bull by the horn and uh, and drive it the way we see it. So with some friends, that's what we did. Uh, and uh, nine months later, there was an uh, election and I was elected as a member of parliament. So 14th of January until, uh, until uh, 22nd of, uh, 21st of November, there was a very interesting period in Tunisia where there is a temporary, the, there we always had a constitution. The constitution, even though uh, we, we were, we were woken by the code mm -hmm. and the election. So we didn't have a single moment where we were a non-constitutional, uh, non, uh, a constitutional void. We were not. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and we managed that. So, but that time, uh, as well, what happened in Tunisia inspired people in Egypt, inspired people in Libya, and in uh, Yemen and other countries. And you know the mm -hmm. rest. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay, great. So uh, you said you 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 have always had a constitution. So. 
the constitution you you were writing on then after the election was that a completely new one or was it sort of an update of the old one and okay. if it got it so sorry i'm I interrupted you no no it's fine Please. okay so uh, the the when we had when we had the uh, the uh, Article 57, which says there is a definite, a definite void in the uh, the president uh, in the presidency. Therefore, mm -hmm. the head of parliament becomes the president. He can become a president only for three months, and he had to organize uh, uh, election for a period uh, within uh, three months. Okay. However, uh, the if he had to do that, there was the main opponent of the president who was set to become the naturally the next president. The opponent of the opponent, you know, there was many opponent didn't want that and said, no, 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 we should not have a, a election with the same constitution. We have to have totally new constitution. And okay. the uh, and the uh, one strong party, uh, one strong opponent was the Islamists. They were really, really into new constitution because they were hoping to bring the whole constitution into their way of thinking. So they, mm -hmm. the different opponent, agreed on one thing, which is new constitution from uh, bl uh, right, totally new constitution. That's why the everybody the representative of the parties at that time and some representative of the people which comes naturally not not very organized matter it was a common understanding that it would be good to have election uh, within not three months but not more than nine months okay uh, so we decided no. to a new constitution we were elected to write a totally new constitution wow well, that, that is a, a a very rare situation. You know, it doesn't happen very often in, in the history of a country that you get to write a totally new constitution. So I wonder how does this start and how is this? And this is where, where our foundation really comes in because these are the processes we are interested in is like, how was that organized? Um, so, you have very different parties. They have very different agendas. And they have now to somehow come together. There has to be a process of, of consultation, of innovation, I don't know. And how, how does this work? So the first innovation was that there was this uh, body which was created naturally, which was some of the thinkers who were trusted by other people who said we need to do this and the process and uh, and they started to debate in the TV, etc. And we ended up having that process accepted and the process was really uh, bottom up. Uh, so they said, look, we elect if we if you guys want to uh, do a new constitution, we elect uh, a parliament, which will be a constitutional parliament, which will do two things. Number one, uh, write the constitution. Number two, himself elect a president and uh, decide on a government and act as a standard parliament for a period yeah. of one year. Okay. And uh, in order to do that, we had to do two things. We, we wrote in two weeks what we call the little constitution, which is the constitution that will manage the country for the next year just from the next year, just the basics. Just okay. Uh, we have the president. How do we choose the president? The president is chosen from the parlament, uh, mm -hmm. from the parliament, one of the and blah, blah, blah. And then we just to run the country for uh, for one year, what we call it the little constitution. Which Ex so excuse me, but for me, it sounds a little bit like if, if, if you found an association, that's the first thing you do. You write yourself a sort of um, uh, a sort of constitution, isn't it? Like yeah, you yeah. organize no, how no, you no, vote. The, and... Yeah, 
so we did two things actually. We did the little constitution, which how the country will be run until the constitution that we will be writing will be approved. Yeah. And that we had, uh, we, we, we give ourselves two weeks to do it. And we did another thing, the internal rules of procedure, how the parliament will work. Yeah. The internal rules. So these two things, we had to do that. Obviously, some parties were more prepared than others. Uh, mm -hmm. Specifically, the ruling party was forbidden to participate. The, uh, the um, Islamists were more prepared than the others. They had much more support or they were much more organized. Uh, mm -hmm. But we had this uh, because uh, uh, we had it worked. But I need to tell you that on the first day when we meet, when we meet, okay, we you feel the weight of the responsibility. But then we need to talk into commissions, right? Yeah. When you talk into the commission, some people they hated each other, and uh, etc. So when they talk. They talk behind behind the behind the shield like this. So we talk behind the shield, and uh, sometimes we do the shield like this. We talk and then we we put it back, and then sometimes we leave it, and we start to talk, and then we are up. We we do it, and slowly slowly because we are going to eat and uh, together later on uh, and in the evening it was it was kind of 24 hours thing right so uh, it was slowly we were uh, putting our shield off so it took us time just to talk without... so they're, 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 what i understand there was a group forming process you you got to know each other because you were eating together you were sort of being together 24 hours so yeah. Uh, and then, and that's then, interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and that first period was important. And then there was, there was another element which was extremely, to me, was extremely useful. There was a group of seven people, who uh, we called it's a it's a NGO, who uh, young people who said this is a revolution which was done by the youth, so the youth and the world needs to know what's happening inside the parliament. Mm -hmm. And uh, everybody was into, uh, you know, transparency and et cetera, et cetera. And we invited them. So they were seven. We have seven commissions, seven commissions to write the constitution, each one a, a topic. And the same seven commission, uh, they are also in the same topic following what's happening with the government. So we have mm -hmm. real jobs. And... Uh, these people were tweeting. When they entered in the commission, no man said he thinks that we, the country should be, the constitution should be totally civil. So they write in Twitter, no man Fehri said, da 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 da. And then uh, the other guy said, we, uh, we, I believe that uh, it should be Islamist country. And they said, Mr. So and so said, it has to be Islamist country. And by doing that, by, by texting, by tweeting to the whole world, they were informing the whole world what's happening in each of these commissions. Mm -hmm. And the effect of that was beneficial because as people didn't know each other and they were opponent and they were fighting with each other, really, literally, literally, they were fighting. Sometimes, not physically. Sometimes they wanted to do it physically, but their friends uh, bring them on, etc. And they are talking behind shields, you know. Uh, yeah. Uh, the fact that we knew, we knew that whatever we say is is being uh, uh, is sent to the whole world at, at that particular moment. So we were measuring what we say. So we, yeah. we reduced the tone of the aggressiveness. So even though we were extremely aggressive, we, we tried to reduce it down not to look bad. Not in front that of is us. very interesting because, you know, uh, when we do something like in, in civic participation in Europe and in Germany, especially with the, the National Citizens Assembly, we were even discussing for the citizens to be sort of closed from the public so that they can be 
that, that they can discuss things without the influence of public opinion. But you did exactly the difference. You just made yourself completely the opposite, uh, make yourself completely transparent. Uh, and that's quite interesting yeah. from, so from process was, point of view. Yeah, it worked very well in the beginning because uh, there was a dis, uh, the dysfunction of the electoral system was that 20% uh, uh, of the population elected uh, two third of the uh, one third, uh, yeah, 50% uh, or 40% led. 20% of the population elected 40% of the of the uh, head uh, of the map. Yeah. And we, we had much people, much more people who, who were like me, but people like me didn't come to vote. There were, therefore, and we were uh, fragmented parties, therefore we didn't have as much uh, yeah. parliamentarian. However, in the real life, in the real life, our line of thinking was bigger than mm -hmm. bigger mm -hmm. than the opponent, but the opponent they had much more parliamentary okay. of the system. So that Twitter thing gave up to everybody. So I felt that mm. I had support from my, my team. Yeah. So yeah. in the beginning, it worked really, really well. And I, I, I can tell you, I, I still imagine that the deputy speaker uh, was once, uh, we did, so, uh, this group, this uh, group, seven people, were also invited other youth to monitor uh, who comes to the parliament on times, who doesn't come. You know, they were uh, watching us. And I remember this youngsters, 25, 26, 27, who uh, they had a hearing in front of us. And the deputy uh, of the speaker she was saying, no, 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 you, you wrote me absent on that day. I was not absent. I was discussing this. So, yeah, money. just sort of from, from a perspective of a craftsman, if I, I imagine someone, yeah. I mean, there's a craft behind it. Writing something is a craft. And I wonder, um, you have these opposing parties now and it was important that they came together, they ate together, they had a group process. Also, the whole country was watching and had a sort of real-time messages from the inside what was happening uh, in your groups. But still, how is it? I have an empty paper. Who's writing the first the first paragraph? And, and, okay. and how, how did you negotiate it? How, how does okay. the text so actually come together? Okay, we decided uh, uh, to to have a general discussion about how many sections we will have in the constitution. Mm -hmm. So we had the preamble, the general freedom section, the judiciary section, the executive section, and the independent bodies section, and the uh, the uh, the local the local government sections. So mm -hmm. how do we reach that seven sections? Mm -hmm. Everybody came with his view and we were debating. And sometimes the head of the parties, the, the groups, yeah. or, or take. So we decided to have these seven sections. Okay. And then we said, okay, in each section, we need to have 22 people. Yeah. Uh, because 217 divided by seven is 22. Mm -hmm. So in the 22, we need to have, within the 22, we need to elect a president. We need to elect uh, a president, uh, uh, a deputy president and uh, a secretary general and a deputy yeah. secretary general. However, if we do it that way, the majority party will have all the presidency, all etc. So we fought against the majority using published pressure to say, no, no, you, you need in the seventh, you need to have 
a representation of, of yeah maximum four for uh, the people in the governing body and uh, and three for uh, for us and we have to debate okay so once we did that and then obviously there was a, a meeting of pick and choosing pick and choose mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, uh, we thought that the most important section was the uh, the uh, uh, the liberty sections, mm -hmm. the freedom, yeah. freedom sections. So, what are the what is allowed? So the, the, the the freedoms of of, of, of the people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. What, yeah, what sure. is the, Yeah. Okay. We thought that's yeah. the most important, thing. and we thought that the Islamist Party will take that, but they took the the preamble. They said, no, no, for us, the preamble is the preamble, the first, yeah, yeah, is much more important because it sets the philosophy of the thing. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, we took, we took the, uh, we took the, uh, the freedom section, the freedom section, da, 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 da. Okay. Now, uh, I'll give you uh, some examples. Mm -hmm. So, in the, uh, so we started, okay. When people get to know each other, it was days and days and days and days and hours, you know. And sure. then, for, for example, say, okay, I was. Uh, I, I will give you an example from the freedom section, and I was. Uh, uh, I'll give you an example of the of the uh, preamble. preamble, and an example from where uh, uh, the independent judiciary. So the preamble. Mm -hmm. So the first thing people want to say that we are a Muslim country. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. The the well, I said the, uh, the, wait. I said no. Wait, we are not. The country is not, not Muslim. The people are Muslims. Mm -hmm. So it's a country of of Muslims. Uh, but we need to indicate that. Uh, uh, you know, uh, the other religions are allowed as well. We wanted to take it off. The the reference to any religion, we want to take it off from the constitution. Yeah. While the other guys didn't want to take it off, we ended up with something which is not, you know, not what uh, everybody, nobody's happy with, but it's barely acceptable to each other. Okay. okay. So then... Uh, that's one example. Ah, and there is the example of uh, the for uh, in Tunis, it's a popular feeling to support Palestinians against Israel. So mm -hmm. they wanted to write in the constitutions. Some people wanted to write in the constitution. Uh, we we should not have relationship with uh, Israel. Mm -hmm. And said, mm -hmm. wait, 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 guys, if we write that in constitution, what happened when Palestinians and Israeli agreed and they mm. became a normal and make peace. Yeah. Uh, we'll be in peace. Should we change the constitution, our constitution, <laughs> because somebody else did something else? Yeah, mm -hmm. but it's blah, 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 blah. So, uh, so uh, we had that debate for how long and we agreed not to put it in. Mm -hmm. But it was hard. Yeah. But that sounds for me a little bit like that the framing went wrong because this was a political issue and the constitution should be about something larger with a broader perspective, shouldn't it? Of course, of course, yeah. of course. But mm -hmm. uh, first, there is not everybody had the same level of intelligence on, uh, you know, to, to, to look forward. But also, mm -hmm. uh, it was politics. Sure, it's, yeah. It's all politics. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the other example of the uh, of uh, uh, we want to say freedom of life is sacred. Nobody should touch it. Mm -hmm. So, which means no, uh, no uh, pendomor. I don't know how to uh, pendomor. Uh, but uh, the other people said uh, they are uh, they are for it. So we ended up not being happy. Saying uh, freedom of life is sacred. You are talking about abortion. Uh, uh, not abortion. Abortion okay. is allowed. About um, uh, execution. Ah, okay, okay. Uh, freedom right. is uh, allowed, but so uh, so death death sentence. Yeah, death. Uh, so uh, we instead of mm -hmm. not referring to the sunset, 
freedom mm -hmm. freedom uh, of living is sacred yeah period. which means automatically there is no death penalty yeah cannot... death penalty yeah but they said uh, uh, they insisted to have only in exceptional uh, in extreme cases mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. uh, and then they ended up which we will define by law which means yeah. you say that it's allowed so yeah. we we fought forever for that and then is it a presidential is it a presidential uh, par uh, or parliamentarian regime what regime so we had to fight and everybody was thinking some of us were thinking 50 years from now mm -hmm. but most of us were thinking what is my position after next election mm -hmm. yeah yeah sure i was, I was in the uh, independent and uh, the independent uh, 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 bodies section so what are the bodies that are constitutionally independent from government from judiciary and from uh, the legislature yeah yeah so we put the we put the uh, we had we ended up with five uh, uh, a body number one was the election the one which is the the freedom uh, uh, the freedom, the other one, the anti-corruption, blah, blah, blah. And we ended up having these. We we started with a long list. Everybody wants everything to be independent where mm -hmm. we, 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 and the government will become useless. And then we ended up to, okay. to it down to five. Numani, um, it seems to me that um, I'm just trying to get this thought that um, this this is a very important issue talking about writing constitution to to look at that people get into this sort of broad perspective and that they can make decisions relatively free from day-to-day -day -day politics okay. it seems that this is something in the design of a process one should sort of consider um, let me just jump to sort of the end and then uh, just uh, look again at sort of our theme of, of, of governance design, because at the moment, my understanding is Parliament is suspended in Tunisia, still is, isn't it? It is uh, cancelled. Yeah, cancelled cancel even. Uh, okay. And, and sure. some might even fear there is a power grab and the move back yeah. to authoritarian yeah. role. So, so, of course, the question is, how could that happen? Like, have been, is was this is this a fault by design in the constitution, or it could couldn't even a good constitution have prevented it? So, thank you for that question. So, the constitution is not the only code which runs the country. Okay. And the constitution, and then you have an electoral law. Okay. So, the, so the electoral law, uh, I wrote the constitution, I will not admit that it's the flaw is in the constitution, <laughs> obviously. But, no, okay. but independently from that, the, uh, the electoral law we had, to write the constitution, we used the system which makes sure that the big parties it reduces the number of the big parties and it increases the number of the small parties. Why we chose on that system? Uh, it does it mathematically, you know, uh, uh, it's a list with the, the higher remaining, so it's formula. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we did it. It was chosen to make sure that everybody has a voice to write the constitution. Okay. That's for the highest the highest uh, the highest uh, you know uh, uh, the biggest party had only 37 or 38 mm percent -hmm. he, mm -hmm. he couldn't he couldn't reach 51 percent okay uh, actually it has 30 percent mm -hmm. and uh, by design you had to do a coalition in order to write the constitution. But once yeah. the constitution is voted, the idea was to, to change the electoral law 
to have it a more functional law, which means it can allow to have a majority. And you, mm -hmm. when you are a majority, you rule. And if people are not happy, they will uh, they will not vote for you next time. Yeah. But, uh, you know, uh, Turkey don't vote for uh, don't vote for Christmas, right? So mm -hmm. Turkey, you know, the animal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't vote for Christmas. So the people who have been elected by that electoral law didn't want to change the electoral law. No, okay. We had we had a re what we consider after a lot of fight, etc., a reasonable workable constitution. Mm -hmm. However, the electoral law was forcing the government to become a coalition of opponents. Therefore, the coalition of opponent comp, uh, opponent didn't work out well, uh, never worked out well, and the people, the the parliament was always buying and selling votes for for this law versus this law, etc. So we had yeah, yeah. ability. So there, were, there was bargaining, but in, was in bargaining. inside the coalition, inside the coalition, fueled by fueled by the people who were, who shouldn't been there in the first place if we changed the law therefore yeah. people saw that the root the root the root like the you know the uh, you know the the tree the root of the tree the root of the problem was happening in the parliament because the parliament was not functioning therefore yeah. we needed to stop the parliament uh, therefore uh, we needed to change the electoral law to have a functioning parliament. Unfortunately, parliament didn't want to change the, the, uh, the law. Therefore, the president, using COVID and using a real dysfunctioning situation, said it yeah. is in my authority, according to article so-and-so, I yeah. decide to suspend uh, to have the uh, curfew or whatever, yeah, yeah, and to suspend the not to suspend it to halt to halt the parliament. Uh, he was when he did that. It was he was allowed to do half of that. He was allowed to suspend the parliament for three months, uh, but keep it open. What he did, mm -hmm. he closed it. Yeah, he went one step further. But he had the popular, he was really popular in doing that because people hated, uh, because of the transparency, people yeah. hate what is happening in the parliament. And they say, we have other, uh, other problem and they are discussing these stup stupid mm -hmm. things, etc. Mm -hmm. Therefore- uh, but so, so my understanding is uh, to boil it down in a very simplistic way is that just because you didn't change the electoral uh, uh, law, which which you wanted to do after you got the constitution, but then didn't do it. Yes, this is sort of it's sort of it's like a bug in in the code. Yes, <laughs> you yes. know, and, and and it has sort of huge implications. Yes. further on the, whole, on. on the whole code. Yeah, yeah on the whole yeah. code. And and uh, so on twenty fifth of uh, July, when the president. Uh, suspended, not suspended, halted, put a halt on the parliament. It was a really popular, popular demand. And pe yeah, people were happy. And actually, I was happy. I was happy because he, we had to do something. However, he couldn't do it more than three months. Yeah. And it has to continue to be open. What he did, he went slowly he with the popular support he drifted away more and more in power grab and as we speak today uh, the president has uh, full power with no control other than popular uprising uh, and he still have popular he's he is still popular he's still mm -hmm. popular. Uh, uh, and in theory when he suspended the parliament recently, normally we should have election in three months, according to the constitution. Now the election are 17 of December, you know, end of the year. Therefore, we are 
in a non-constitutional era. Okay. Which we never have been in Tunisia yeah, yeah. since uh, since 1780. We always wow. have been respecting the constitution, even okay. though with some interpretation, but we mm -hmm. have been respecting the constitution. Now we are in outside the constitution, clearly outside mm -hmm. the constitution. And the uh, the uh, all the well, power is in the hand of one person. That one person, as we speak, still have popular support. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Well, this probably brings us around to 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 the even broader perspective and uh, just a short glance at the time. Uh, we we only have sort of maybe. A, a, quarter of an hour for this discussion and then uh, to, to get some questions as well from, from the listeners. Um, I would like to sort of turn over to, to the broader perspective of sort of global governance or, or the world and, and the state of democracies. As I said, the Co-Creation Foundation's idea is to look at governance as a form of design which can be co-created by the people, for example, of, of a nation, of a country of a society. And um, I found it quite interesting while you were talking about the process, I always spotted obviously that there's the logic of politics behind it, which is negotiations of interests, of distributions of power, ad adversity, which has to be somehow negotiated out. But um, your other realm, uh, as a business angel and the digital realm and startups, uh, that is the logic of design and innovation, where we try to find creative solutions and innovations to problems. Um, and, and, and I was just, the other day, I, I read about uh, Solon, the, the guy who invented the attic democracy. He, he was a designer, basically, because no one had done something like he had done. He, he invented a new system. He built a the, the attic democracy was a sort of uh, a, a social political startup, uh, if, if, if you want. Yeah. So my question is looking at the state of democracies on, on uh, at the whole world. I mean, democracies are under threat at the moment. We see what's happening in, in Ukraine. Um, I, I had the feeling, especially at, at the conference we attended in Tunis, that sort of the, the Western democratic narrative is crumbling. It, uh, people don't have faith in it anymore, but they still want democracy. They still want freedom. And, but they probably want to do it in a different way than the traditional sort of Western democracies would promote democracy. Like, and, and we discussed the idea that the countries like Tunisia um, could they come up with an own uh, form of democracy, which is much closer to their own cultural identity? And that would involve, of course, governance design, a sort of innovative approach to how we organize ourselves. So what, what do you think about that from your perspective and, and experience? So what you were in, when you are speaking, you are talking about democracy, the Western democracy, the uh, democracy which is closer to the culture of the uh, different people, etc. What you were referring to are the tools of the democracy. Yeah. The tools. Not the, the democracy itself is a concept that I want to have my voice, I want to have my voice heard, and I... I want to influence. Uh, yeah, I was talking about the system. The si it. Yes. The, the, the so governance the system behind the democracy. Yeah. The system building the democracy. Yeah. The, 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 the roof under which we all go in. The systems are not, uh, uh, are under threat. Some of them are not workable anymore. And this we realized that Actually, since the end of the last uh, last century, and to me, the end of the last century was the German War. Mm -hmm. German War, 1984. Is that 1984? The Berlin War. The, the Berlin War, yeah. Yeah, uh, when, when, it, uh, when it came down. Yeah, when it came down. 84? 80, 84. 
84 yes that was the end of the that was the end of the uh, previous the previous um, uh, century the yeah, 20th yeah. century and a new so uh, the people said enough is enough and started to do and since that you remark that in most democracies uh, for a period you always the president is 49.9 uh, you know 50 50 but zero one percent and the other guy or girl is 49.99 so they are very small and yeah. all the 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 uh, the the media the social uh, you know the social networks etc cetera, etc cetera, were influencing the democracy therefore where people were going give me the vote give me the vote give me your vote give me your vote uh, and i'll see what you can do with it later mm -hmm. and okay, what do you want uh, you want this i'll give you this okay give me your vote and we yeah, they went into that mode i just want the vote in order to have a seat to implement my my uh, my uh, politics and the policies i want to, to do but policies are tough the uh, we are entering a new world where everything has to change and we are entering into unknown world for a lot of people. You know, the digital economy, artificial intelligence, et cetera, et cetera. Most people are not educated and prepared to, to they don't see themselves into this new world. They're, they are scared. That when people are scared, what will happen? They will vote for the people who tell them, I understand you. Not for the people who will really change it because they don't know who can change it and how cannot. Therefore, election, which is the main tool of democracy, became, became just a game, just a game. It's not, it's, uh, it, is, uh, it is how you get the, the pen in order to write the, the law. And now, and, and in a lot of cases, democracy does not uh, uh, go fast enough for a change. Therefore, there is tendency for leaders who understand that they need to change and to, to do unpopular, unpopular, uh, unpopular measures. They have to move fast, and to move fast, they need to have the power to do it. And to have the power to do it, they don't need to be questioning too much. And obviously, you drift into dictatorships. And this situation is, in my view, due mainly to the fact that we are entering into a world that nobody knows how this world will look like. It's like, like I am an old, I'm 57. If I don't know how to swim and you throw me in a pool, what will happen? We will, I will oh. drown, yeah. You take a baby just born and you throw it in a, in a pool, what will happen? He will swim. So uh, hopefully. Uh, hopefully, you know, that's why they give birth yeah. to the swimming pool. Uh, uh, and, and if we are entering into the world we used to, to walk on, uh, on land and breathe air, it's like we are going to live into a swimming pool. We are not equipped to build the future. The youth is more equipped than us to build the future because instinctively they see it. I cannot see, I can only see the next 30 years, but the next 30 years, the world will change as much as the last thousand words, a uh, th thousand years. So I cannot, my mind cannot grasp it. And I am between bracket an educated guy who did a lot of study, who know how to read and write. But most of the people didn't have that chance. Therefore they are scared. And when they are scared, who will they vote for? They vote for uh, populists. And when you have populists, therefore the people who you vote for, for naturally, the system, are not necessarily the best people who can do the change you require. And yeah. we, we are into that situation everywhere in the world. I'm not saying, by the way, we need to go back to dictatorship and dictatorship. No, exactly. And, and I, I understand. 
I understand you. So, but I think the question even more comes to mind, is there a way we can, um, we can come to, to a craftsmanship or a design of governance where, for example, uh, uh, these necessities can be coded into the future democratic systems, that, that, this, that, that there's some resilience, for example, built into these systems against autocratic rule, or that there is um, some necessity built into it, coded into it, that things can move fast and change fast without risking um, the destruction of the democratic system. Uh, so, yeah, you need to embed in the democratic system the, the efficiency. So when you say democratic system, there could be a democratic system uh, where people are elected properly, people say what they want, but the people in charge of doing something, they cannot do anything because it's locked. It's locked. Therefore, mm -hmm. efficiency is not coded in the code of the, uh, if election. I'm not saying democracy. Democracy mm -hmm. on the long term delivers. And uh, if you are in the Western world, in Europe, in Germany, in France, Yes, there are people suffering, but economic prosperity is kind of assumed exists. But if you go to some of our countries, people don't have what to eat. So you have the problem, let's take the example of, uh, of Rwanda. You know, the people who are fighting each other. Is the guy a democratic uh, guy? Obviously not, clearly not. Is, he, is the country is efficient? Uh, it seems to me is efficient and it seems that people have more food on the table. So uh, the question is, uh, the dilemma is food on the table and uh, food on the table and freedom of expression or freedom to act. Sometimes they are, you need to have priority some, some, sometimes. And the electoral system today can favor this bit here, freedom of expression, against efficiency to have food on the table. And, uh, and that's the problem in, uh, and people, uh, autocratic people, autocratic people use, no, 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 I need to have food on the table first, then I'll give freedom to the people. No, it's wrong. You need to have both. Yeah. You know, have both. And, uh, and then we have also a global uh, threat with climate change and sustainability so you uh, need coming be, on top of it. Yeah, you need to be tough. Measures, look, today in a, in a very, uh, every single government needs to take a tough measures on a lot of people's behavior. You know, COVID, where people, you know, forced to stay home. We took our basic freedom, right? Mm -hmm. But it was accepted that it's for our good. Well, not by all of us. Not by all of us, by most of us. Yeah. But 99% of us or 98% of us. Uh, but, uh, it was, and otherwise people will die. People accepted that. So the, the, this, in theory, should not exist, but it exists. The, 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 trade-off between efficiency mm -hmm. and freedom. Okay, but from, from, from the perspective of governance design, I could argue, well, that is not different if, if I would um, design a complex product for a new market, or if I would uh, design a new technology for some kind of future science, because there's always problems to tackle and, um, the question is, is, is rather, how do I do it? How, how can I create a governance system, a political system, um, hopefully in a co-creative way, uh, which means people are participating, even antagonistic parties are participating in creating a system, which in the end provides food on the table 
gives uh, sort of freedom, uh, uh, freedom rights and uh, also uh, is equipped for a sustainable future. Shouldn't that be possible? I, I, I mean, in, in, so you need isn't, some isn't that our code. only hope? Who will write that code? So I, I agree with you. Yeah. So who would write that code? Everybody yeah, needs Who to and how? This. How do we write it? So uh, there was, when we were writing the constitution, I wanted to have a wiki constitution. You know, a, a, no, a wiki. this is an innovation. Yeah, I wanted to have a wiki constitution. I said, let's do a wiki constitution. I like that. Let's put it on the internet and put and let everybody write, etc., and see. Okay. And then people, uh, uh, one, it was not practical for us, and two, the people thought that I'm crazy. Uh, yeah. But then it was we didn't have the tools to do a wiki constitution. We didn't have the tools because you cannot have a wiki constitution while uh, uh, you were. Uh, uh, while you were under stress to deliver the constitution without one year. For example, yeah. you can have uh, an amendment to a constitution on one topic. You can today leave it, you open it and you let the guys, anybody who wants to put his, you have the right to put uh, two sentences or this amount of words on this articles. And then you have, everybody will write it. And then a computer take the, take uh, all this and tell you this is how much uh, how much is this and this is the optimum uh, solution so you enter into the artificial intelligence world uh, by mm -hmm. designing using artificial intelligence people look at what you wrote etc do you which like brings to... a lot of risks as well yes New you risks, would like yeah. to be ruled by uh, by computers because computers can find for you and for us mm -hmm. Uh, the optimum solution to problems based on all what happened before and uh, uh, by extrapolating our reaction. You can do it. You can do it today. There is no issue if one of the artificial intelligence uh, uh, companies decided to put all the constitutions into is, one. Is, is, is that a hope or a threat <laughs> that this will be possible? Uh, it is technically possible. It is technically it, it, it might be, and people might want to try it. Yeah. Uh, I see mostly the. Uh, I really don't know. Uh, I see mostly the threat rather than the. Mm. Hope. Yeah, I do as well. Uh, but you know, in in Berlin, we're doing this uh, project, a participatory project for the digitalization of Berlin, and we are actually uh, we we'll have to write kind of. Um, um, not a constitution, but we have to write up obviously some 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 laws or bylaws for the digitalization of of the city state of Berlin, and we're thinking about doing this in a in a um, GitHub system. So you have an open source code, which yeah. is pretty close to your wiki idea. You have an open source code. And you could even fork it and use sort of different version of the same code to to look which code works better um, and then bring it together into the main code of, for example, a, a, a bylaw for, for digitalization of, of a community. You know, I'll, I'll give you a, an example. Uh, one of the companies I know, the artificial intelligence uh, companies I know, they worked for, uh, for city, of, uh, city of New York, city of New York, mm -hmm. they, to work to put a model where the city of New York should put the taxis to have them most accessible to its people, to optimize. Mm -hmm. And it was based on data, et cetera. And they tell them this is where you need to put the system. So that same company now had a lab, have a lab with, uh, with BioNTech in order to anticipate the mm -hmm. next variant of epidemiology. The same companies can manage uh, uh, participatory uh, digitization, things like that. So the, the technology to do it, yes, it's feasible. Mm. Uh, when, when do you want the human part of it to, to enter? It's, it's, it's a scary. I don't have an answer, by the way, for that. 
I know yeah. that it's scary. Uh, uh, it is. No money. Before we ask our listeners for some questions, last last words from from your part. Future of democracy. Could you? What, what's your thought on it? So the the the, the, the concept of democracy is at threat because the tools using the tools we use to uh, to reach democracy are too old we need to reinvent the new tools to do it yeah. and to invent the new tools to do it we need uh, to do it in uh, i can say i, I don't know uh, i'll stop mm. there because i literally honestly don't know but i yeah. know that you know everything over the last Next 30 years, the world will change as much as the last thousand years. And everything yeah. has changed over the last thousand years. You know, uh, how to do education, communication, uh, 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 manufacturing, etc. The only thing which didn't change is the tools to do democracy. We always have... Exactly. We have parliament. Well, uh, so it has to change. Yeah. How, well, this is... this. You couldn't have put a better sort of end to this session because this is exactly what the co-creation foundation tries to do even though we don't have an answer yet we yeah. have many ideas and thoughts and uh, we'll start experiments with it and um, we just today just two two hours ago we handed in a huge uh, proposal for a eu funded project um, to work on that so um, hopefully this this is what will happen in the next years that we yeah. will find the new tools to do that. Nomani, I thank you very, very much. That was so, uh, for me, it was exciting and is exciting. And I have many inspirations and ideas, um, which I take away from this conversation. And I would like to continue it at some time or the other. And we will now stop the recording. Thank you again so much for being before here. Stop, and before you stop, I'd like to, to mention two things to keep something in mind. Uh, look look at how internet is governed today mm -hmm. how is it governed you know there is an ayata a, a company who manages this and then there is different bodies who are doing it yeah but the and then there is the governments are not the people who are deciding on the internet but the internet is functioning somehow mm -hmm. uh, uh, whether but, you know but it is under threat as well isn't it Yes, but at least it's functioning. It's functioning, uh, yeah. We need yeah. to look at two examples. If if the, the companies managing the addressing of the internet collapse today, uh, the world will collapse, right? Yeah. If the UN, if the UN collapse today, well, the world will not collapse. There will be less... <laughs> uh, less yeah, I, I feel you. Know, uh, so, uh, so, so there is something in between which needs to happen. Yeah, I don't know what it is, but there is something in between which needs to happen. Okay. Call it UN two dot zero or something. Thank you. Thank you so much.